What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Game Informer Show, a weekly podcast covering the video game industry. Join us every Thursday for discussion about the latest gaming news, reviews, and exclusive reveals alongside Game Informer staff and special guests from around the industry. I'm one of your hosts today, Alex Van Aken, and today I'm joined by Kyle Hilliard. How you doing, Kyle? Hello. Oh. I cut you off. You, you cut me off. How rude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Etiquette well, 101 now. of podcast. Never oh, interrupt somebody. Never uh, talk doing... over anybody like we're doing right now. Ev- I, well, ever. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Don't uh, do uh, it. Hey, look. I'm doing all right. I'm playing video games. I'm on, I'm on chapter 14 of Like a Dragon, which is oh. called Finale. Um... So I think I'm about halfway through the game. Yeah. Is what I'm getting at. Because the end, it's always Yakuza. You want to get to finale part three. Exactly. It's always, it, and it gave it to me like twice now at this point. They're like, by the way, this is going to take a long time. You're not going to be able to save for a long time. So like, make sure you're ready to go. And it's just here. a side quest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think, I think I am almost done with, uh, with like a dragon, which is cool. I'm, I'm, I like, I really like that game a lot. I'm really ready to move on to something different. Hell yeah. Uh, we are also joined by Brian Shea. Hello, Brian. Hey, Alex. So happy to be here. Yeah? You look like it. You look very I happy. I am just overjoyed. Yeah, you uh, wouldn't talking... stop giggling before the podcast started. <laughs> if they saw the disaster that was happening before we actually got the recording off the ground and running, uh, they would not. They would know I was not giggling. Yeah, he was just like in the corner, you know. <laughs> I think I saw like super I think excited. Were, it was more bawling than giggling. Like flicking up behind him as he giggled. Yeah, I saw that too. Uh, that other voice you heard is who is rounding out the show today, Charles Hart. How you doing, Charles? <laughs> you see? Yep. <laughs> Shay rubbed off on you. Or, or should I say, he who? He who? As, as uh, Jack Frost in Persona series says. I haven't made it that far. The Shin Megami Tensei franchise, I've, Charles. I know you're a young Kyle, man. No one, on. no one's ever heard of that. No one knows what that <laughs> is. Um, as far as we know, that series does not exist. Yeah, yeah, at this know. point? Yeah. Uh, well, welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, at the top, if you want to support Game Informer, just want to shout out that you can go and grab a physical version of our magazine uh, via an individual issue at GameStop.com slash Game Informer. Uh, for seven ninety nine, our Apex Legends issue should be going up soon, if not already up by the time you hear this. Uh, or go check out our Final Fantasy VII Rebirth uh, magazine cover story as well. Um, that's a great way to support us, and you know, get get a lot of content as well about games. We Good love content, writing, written features, not content, written features and articles, and reports and all that fun stuff. Uh, well, I mentioned the game already, so let's just get started with this one. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Brian, you, uh, have played more of this video game. Even, even more. You've written about this game a lot over the course of the last year. Wait, hold on, Brian. You went, did you go on a trip to play it? I did. Because I, I thought you just went exclusively to get photos of yourself with the directors and... <laughs> <laughs> That's what the embargo said we could say up until uh, this past Tuesday night when after the state of play, we could give our full impressions of what we played. And uh, I guess in the same line of thinking as I had when I saw the game alongside Alex Van Aken here when we were out in Tokyo visiting Square Enix's headquarters for the cover story, uh, game still slaps. Good. That uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, it's just extremely like an awesome experience. I don't want to get too much into like the story details because we are starting to get pretty close and I, I think that people are getting to the point where they just want to play this game and that's kind of how i felt emerging from this this gameplay session was like all right i i know that this game like i i, I put this in my written preview if you go to gameinformer.com you can read the full written preview but like i've played a lot of this game i've seen a lot of this game i've talked about this game a lot um there, are, there nothing is a sure bet, right? Like no video game ever pre-release is like a, a, a sure thing. But like having been doing this for like 15 years plus at this point, like I know that playing pre-release games, like there are games that are like, this looks really great. And there are games that have like just a ton of red flags right off the bat. And like this 
is definitely on one side of that spectrum where it's like, okay, this does look like a really, really good game. And like, I would, it's to the point where I would be surprised if this turns out not to at least be pretty darn good, if not great. Good. Yeah. Um, it, and that's it all, all comes down about. to the story at this point, right? It's like, that's, that's the only place that could fumble because every time you've touched it, you've been like, this feels good, right? Yeah. It feels good. Uh, the, the world seems really well put together from what I've played. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's gotten to the point where I am with the fans and that like, I've seen a lot about this game. I've talked a lot about this game. I'm just ready to play the final product and I'm very excited for that. Um, but yeah, basically it was like, it started off with like the opening, which was kind of like an extended version of the, uh, the Nibelheim, Mount Nibel mm. section that mm -hmm. uh, people at Tokyo Game Show played and that we got to experience uh, again at, the Square Enix headquarters. And then after that, it kind of dumped me out into uh, a town and then into the uh, a small portion of the open world. You know, got to catch a chocobo, which you can see uh, in an episode of New Gameplay today on the Game Informer YouTube channel. And uh, we got to do a lot of just kind of side quests and exploration and, you know, got to learn a, a little bit about some of the stuff that you're going to be able to do, like um world intel that uh chadley who was from final fantasy 7 remake mm -hmm. you, you may remember him uh chadley Freaking you get to chadley. do some more stuff for him um you also like so one of the things that i did was like i found a a sanctuary which is like where some of the summons like it's like a, a sanctuary devoted to them mm -hmm. and you can go and analyze and learn more about those creatures in order to strengthen your summons and so I found a Titan sanctuary and you have to do like a little like timing based slash memory based mini game where it's like, it's like a, a circle appears and like it, it, like a little like clock hand goes around and it beeps at certain points and you have to push X on those points. But then when it goes around the second time, when you actually have to push the buttons, those icons disappear. So it's like, you have to remember exactly where you're pressing the button um in order to pass that mini game and like just the first one that i did i was just like oh this this could get a little complicated later on i feel like this first one was just like pretty simple but still i'm like okay this this, this one might be a little tricky um but yeah like it was just kind of getting to know the world getting to know the characters uh there was a boss fight at the end of the demo but um i ended up not making it to that part because i was too busy exploring a lot in in the uh the open world so I had to relinquish the controller before getting to the boss fight. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling extremely confident. The The combat still feels amazing. I really enjoy like the synergy abilities that uh, you can unlock and use with the characters. If you use like enough ATB attacks in the uh, in a battle with like multiple characters. So like if you want to do Cloud and Aerith's synergy ability, you have to do like I think it's like three ATB attacks with Cloud and three ATB attacks with Aerith. And then that will mean that like you filled the bar for both of those characters. You can use a synergy ability with them. Um, and those are usually really fun cinematic attacks. They have a, a wide range of different abilities that you can, and like effects that you can unleash in those. So those are kind of like really geared towards like the longer fights, because if you're out there in the, the, the wilds and you just encounter like some low level enemies, you're going to slash through them before you're able to do enough of the, the ATB attacks that would allow you to unlock the synergy ability. But like, I would imagine in like a boss fight that those would come in real handy uh, for kind of evening the odds a little bit. And also, you know, diversifying the combat a little bit. So I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to say too much more. Uh, there, there are kind of like these, uh, I don't want to call them like Ubisoft towers that you can unlock, but like they, they're like, um, they are these towers that you go over and like you have to like activate them. And then it, it just shows you like icons nearby of like, here's some stuff you can do in this area. And it's like kind of like a, a, a small diameter or a small radius that it will activate and uh, show like, oh, there's like a, a world intel activity over here if you feel so inclined or you know here's the main quest that you're supposed to be on so so it does yep. sound like a ubisoft tower it does but like <laughs> thankfully it doesn't seem like it's as like okay you have to climb up to the top like it's literally just at the bottom of the tower sometimes there's enemies around it's kind it, of but running like, by you just go past it you you activate the terminal and then you're good to go like you don't have to worry about climbing it as far as i've seen i've only encountered a couple of these towers um in the the world but 
yeah, um, I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just ready to play it at this point. I, I made the, the, the comparison to like, I'm at the point in like talking about this game where it's like I, I had like a wet washcloth and I've just wrung it out <laughs> and I'm at the point where it's like, okay, you're just squeezing it even harder and like only little drops are coming out at first. And that is, uh, that's kind of where I'm at with this for like, in terms of like, I, I've, I've said all I can say about this game. Uh, I'm just ready to play the final version. And then say more after that. <laughs> yeah. I refuse. You won't be I, able I, to escape it. Yeah, someone else is on the review other than Brian. So yeah, yeah. You, you do get a little reprieve. Yes. Yeah. I, I did That's a lot of the, the, name of the third game in that series. Oh yeah, my God. Yeah. It is. Reprieve. Yeah. Reprieve. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, it's actually it's... not a terrible conclusion title for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I still think it should be reloaded. Personally. <laughs> I did Probably ask... Uh, I did ask Hamaguchi if Reloaded was the name, and he laughed and said no. But he also said he he admits that he does not know it what the final title is because Nomura is the only one who knows apparently. Resurrection. <laughs> oh, I'm just going off Matrix titles. I know. Um, have they? <laughs> this, this is something I don't think you know the answer to, Brian. Have they said it's going to be three? Do we even know that, or is it going to be four titles? Uh, yeah, it's going to be three. It's, it's going yeah. to be three. Okay. I mean, Crisis Core, if you count that, then I guess it's four. But, but that's, that's not part of the canon that. either, right? No. Yeah. 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 I was so just people curious. are yeah. very upset that I implied that it's not part of the canon. Uh, in well, the... <laughs> well, look, that's it is and it isn't, right? Because this is like a new canon, but it does seem to acknowledge the original canon. So like, but... These are these are questions we just can't answer. We don't know, you know. <laughs> Only Nomura knows, and even after we beat Rebirth, we're gonna be we're still not gonna be sure because that's just the nature of these games <laughs> and Nomura's storytelling. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we've all been playing Suicide Squad. We talked about it last week, uh, Marcus and Kyle. Um, you guys checked it out early and kind of shared your early impressions. Uh, but I think all of us on this call have now played it. Um, to some extent. Um, so, Charles, I'm going to go to you. Uh, I want to hear what you think about this game. Uh, what do I think about this game? I have <laughs> perhaps never been more conflicted about a video game <laughs> in in such specific yeah. elements of, like, I feel like sometimes there's games where it's like, I want to like this, but there's something <clears throat> holding me back in the combat like i want to like the combat but there's something in the comments like that's pulling me back or i want to like the storytelling but something in the story that's pulling me back i feel like i'm like fine with the story at least where i'm at i'm like maybe five or six hours in um i beat like one of the the first major boss i think um i'm like okay with that i don't think i'm like in love with it but that's the part where i'm like this is fine if this is the whole game would be fine the I, it's just so boring <laughs> i just feel like all <laughs> all the shooting i like i actively want to not do any of these missions because they drive me crazy of how like i feel like i just did this i feel like i've i'm just gonna go in and play the same mission going over to another over rooftop and variations. And, yeah there's so yeah. much context for like this time we're gonna collect this thing from the enemy so we can put it here so that we can you know activate the yada yada it's like but we're doing we're attacking waves of enemy in one area, yeah right it's like well yeah but it, but i described it differently this time <laughs> yeah there's a whole thing where like you unlock contracts which are like little achievements you have for a limited period of time and i had to like look up i was like wait why am i doing this not not story-wise mechanically what is the purpose of this it's like well you get yellow dots you get purple squares you get blue circles and i was like what are those they never told me what those were and then like only later did i unlock like places to spend that stuff but it's all like this it's not a type of game i usually play and i'm really only in this because i like the arkham game so much but yeah it's it's a conflicted time yeah it's it, it does have the problem of what i was concerned about when i came on this podcast talking about my extended preview that i did a couple months ago where every mission just feels the same no matter like what you're doing it's like they they try to dress it up in different ways but at the end of the day you're going to point of interest and fending off waves of enemies and like going from rooftop to rooftop and there's like different dialogue stuff that pops up that like as somebody who like charles loves the arkham games that's sometimes interesting to be like oh that's what's been going on in this world since the past five years or whatever it is in game but like 
man, do I, I I'm there purely for the story at this point. And even that's like a, a tenuous attraction for me at this point, because like, I just want to go back and play like Arkham city or Arkham Knight or something instead, yeah. because I, I just, mm. I, like, I, I, I wish they just would have done like a single player game is what it boils down to. The most, I like, I'm with you guys. I'm like, I'm, I'm the story is why I'm there, but it's, telling that the most excited i've been about like a plot point and i don't know if this even counts as a plot point is walking through the offices of the daily planet there was a newspaper on the wall that said like demon bat sighted in the city and it kind of had like what you what would basically like a screenshot from arkham knight and i was like ooh, what does that mean that's that's cool and that was like that was the most excited i've probably been did you of, do like, the museum kyle uh, yeah, I talked to all that stuff, but the because like Arkham has always been so good at putting at like seeding things, uh, like in the background and on walls, of like, ooh, what does that mean? Like, what what is this connected to? And it was just one of those moments that was a reminder of like, this is an Arkham Knight sequel. Don't forget, you know. And it's like I just, yeah, I just would have so much rather had a story focused Which, single player game in that world <laughs> it's such an insane thing to me that like to call this like a sequel to the arkham series because like it yes it, it is. is it, it is. is but it's such like a weird thing that's like being like yeah like i don't know halo wars is a sequel to halo combat evolved or maybe it's a prequel i don't even know the timeline at this point but it's like just such a different experience it's hard to like i don't know like it's yeah. it's weird <laughs> I, I think when I Alex? look at this game, I, I've i been thinking a lot about this game. And there's, like, been, of course, discourse and all of that. I think, like, when I when I think about this game... Let me mute my my phone, a sorry. Whistle. Yeah, my, my friend's this... texting me my notes on the fly, so I know what to say. <laughs> Here's what I need you to say about suicide. Yeah. Um, I think, like, if, if I had worked on this game, I would be proud of the final product. Like, I think there are, like genuinely like some really cool things about this game that like you know whether it's you know i think the character design is really great i think um the movement systems are like cool ideas and like vfx all that like i think the individual parts of this game are like are worth being proud of like as a game developer i think um it's, te you know, it's technically very impressive yeah. yeah yeah like i i think where it kind of loses me personally is kind of like the di the direction. I mean, we've, we've talked about that to death, but like the individual parts are like, yeah, like I would be super proud if I was, you know, part of this team and I put this out, like I would be so, so excited. And it's been cool to see like, you know, people on Twitter, some of them, this is their first game they've shipped, that kind of thing. So I like thinking about those people when I like talk about this game and, um, you know, it's never fun to, to you know, not like a game right like i think we all want to enjoy the games that we're playing and i think for me it's just like the direction of the game i think there's like when you talk about like the three c's of, of game design uh character controls camera like this game does character really well i think um and then fumbles on both like re really like the controls for me i i I don't enjoy them like switching between like the bumpers and you have to remember like, well, this one will send you forward. This one will send you upward. And then, you oh, know, yeah. and like, it just feels, it feels clunky. I think like Are you playing as King shark. Yeah. King shark. And then I've, I've messed <laughs> with, uh, um, uh, captain boomerang as well. The forward and upward confusion. Cause that's, yeah. King shark, so yeah. yeah. I, I mean, the, the movement and traversal feels like such a miss for me. I think it's like, also it's really fast. That's the highlight for me. Like that, I think is. I mean, maybe if you're able to focus on just one character, it can be. But like, they each are like vaguely similar in the way they control, but just enough that it's like, all right, I've been playing Harley Quinn for the last three hours. Now I want to try Captain Boomerang, and it's like, oh wait, so I have to use this button combination to do this, and but like they're their midair reset happens in this way instead of this yeah. way. And how do I like thrust forward and get like that extra little like juice squeezed out of that, like one airborne move that I did. And then you go to King shark and it's like, okay, well I have to do this to go up and this to go forward and this to like, I, and I can swim in the middle of the air. And it's like, I, I think I would feel better if it was just like one uniformed control scheme across them, even though they're trying to make these characters feel distinct. And also like, I told the developers this when I was at the uh, the the preview event. I was like, 
it's rough going from playing Spider-Man 2 to playing as Harley Quinn and swinging in this way, like when I'm used to playing as like Spider-Man and just like swinging seamlessly from building to building. And this, it's like, all right, you, you got to wait for your thing to recharge. Swing, then, you can then fall a the... bunch. And yeah. right before you hit the ground, you can, you'll have time to press it again. But, oh, then you can kind of grapple it. And all of that is like not even bringing in the context, the fact that you can just hold a button and run a run up every single building run around yeah. the side of it seamlessly with no no there's no stamina bar there's no like oh well you have to kind of jump in between to like refresh your you know your um the 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 movement options you have it's just you can literally run up and down the side of buildings and it's like why why am i going to what why i'm going to do this because you know i want to like try to have fun so like yeah i'm gonna try to engage in these systems but like the efficient way of getting around this map, uh, you know, in certain areas is just, just run up the side of it and, you know, you, you don't even have to, like, worry about your, your powers. Um, and and I, 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 that's a good thing to me. Like, I don't want sure. a stamina bar on running. I, 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 oh, I there do. Is, there, oh, no. God, I feel like you, a game of You don't have it, it with Spider-Man. <laughs> I would well, rather I, have no I stamina played, bar. I haven't played Spider-Man. Oh, okay. I would rather have no yeah. stamina bar in the swinging than add a stamina bar to the running up the walls because... Like that's the biggest hitch for me. It's like I can't get into like the groove that I want to get into when I'm going. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. Area. One is sure. so free and one is so strict. Yeah, and, and like, I, I think the fun clear. one should. I think they should be swapped. Sure, I get that. And like, you, it's more fun to jump as King Shark than it is to just kind of magnetize to the side of the wall. You're saying. Yeah, and one of them, the magnetize the wall, is the one that has no limits, and mm -hmm. the one that's like really cool is the one that has like limits in place, and it's like. Well, what if we swapped those, you know? Yeah. I think, I will I think say, it kind of speaks I... to, like, the design error in this game to me of uh, the stuff we talk about when we talk about this game is, like, the guns and the traversal. And to me, when I think of, like, the Suicide Squad as a brand, there's a lot of stuff that makes it interesting, but I'm not like, oh, man, I'd love to play as Harley Quinn because I want to swing from a bat drone occasionally. Or, like, oh, the thing that makes Deadshot cool is that he has a jetpack. Like those are the big selling points for the game, but it's kind of like that it doesn't line up with what I think when I think of the characters versus like the Arkham games, which what made them so like revolutionary to me is it's like, what makes Batman so cool? He's a really skilled hand hand combat. He's really terrifying. If He's rich. Like a dark space with him. He's rich. So you have all his money. Um, and then, uh, uh, like he's a detective, so there's all this like mystery and storytelling in, in in that space of it. So I think that's what makes this game so odd to me is that like on paper each of these elements, like I don't I don't dislike the traversal. I just it's so it's such a part of the game. I feel like I need to have an opinion on it. Whereas like I don't really talk about the gliding in the Arkham games because like it's good, but that's not why I'm playing the game, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I will say that I, I do want to call out that once you are used to the, the traversal, like I've finally, I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of Harley Quinn's traversal. Like once you start like stringing together, like, all right, you land. And then if you, if you press like the stick in right when you land, you do like a cool slide and then burst off that and then swing and then grapple up to a ledge and then repeat that process. Like you do get into like a really cool flow state but it just still feels kind of cumbersome and convoluted to like, just do the cool thing, you know? Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, I did. I wanted to share something similar just to like throw in some positivity. Cause I, the more I play, the more I'm kind of like leaning on the positive side of things. Like I was, I didn't know where I was last week. And then I wrote uh, uh, an opinion piece for the site that was like, I don't know how I feel about this game. And I'm starting to tip towards the positive. And a lot of that is, Sticking with one character, I've been pri mm -hmm. I, I've I've been switching back and forth. You know, if I'm going to switch between Harley Quinn and Deadshot, but I do I have found the rhythm with Harley Quinn of like swing, um, double jump, slide on a rooftop, jump back into the air, uh, grapple to the you know from a ceiling, and then hit X right as you hit the ledge to jump further. But like you do have to find it and you do have to practice it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like even I I. It, like if you are struggling initially like I, I I was there and that is absolutely the case and it's like I hate that sort of recommendation of like oh you know it doesn't get good until four hours in you know like that always drives me crazy because it's like it should be fun from the first second but um 
I, I have gotten a point with a few of the characters, at least. Captain Boomerang, I'm still having a really hard time with. But with Harley and Deadshot in particular, I am moving through the city at a pace that I really like. That I would not put on par with Spider-Man, which is the best city traversal ever, period. But like I do hit some of that sort of flow and that comboing sometimes that I, that I like. But then, you know, it, the, the combat is like hit and miss. The know? combat, the, the fact that, you know... This is like a, a third person shooter. Every character feels the same in terms of like their shooting, right? But like the fact that it's like, yeah. I mean, for the most part, right? Yeah. Of I, course, I there's like little yeah, differences, yeah. you know? It's, but it's like, basically the different guns actually are a lot different than the, than the characters, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. Like but like yeah. none of those guns, like the fact that like when I'm shooting, you know, this, this machine gun or, or this sniper rifle, that recoil is almost non existent. There's like very little, if any, camera shake like the feedback that i'm getting from using these guns like the thing the little details that go into making a good shooter like that just aren't here uh mm -hmm. and it just ends up feeling like flat um and the fact that that's like one of the main parts of this game i think i would be okay with it if it be be okay with it being you know this kind of wave-based sh shooter in some areas if the the gunplay felt really really good uh, yeah, and it, and it just doesn't. Um, and that's probably one of the bigger parts of the game that that does doesn't you know work for me personally. Sure, I mean it's a big part of it. Just, yeah, it, it, yeah. I just it just sucks that like that is the core gameplay of of this game, and it's like God, you guys nailed it with the Arkham games. Like, absolutely, could not have done it better to the point that everybody was copying them. And now it feels like, I don't know, it just feels like they, they started over from square one and they didn't come anywhere near to as successful as they were in the games that this is the direct sequel to. Do you guys, uh, do you ever play that Guardians of the Galaxy game? Yeah. yeah. I saw someone like mention that the other day and I was like, that's what I want. I wanted this to be. The more I Ooh, think about yeah. it. Yeah. Of like, it's... I don't know. I guess the combat wouldn't have to be the same, but just like the spirit of everything, that was more of what what I think that Rock City could do. A really, yeah. Because it's interesting. What... I did not. I like Guardians of the Galaxy a lot. I think it's a really good game, but it comes down to like this the story and like was I, I there were moments where I was getting emotional uh, at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy for sure. Um, but yeah, that's I didn't even think to compare them, but it is a group of sort of like idiots you know, going on an adventure together. <laughs> uh, King um, Shark is is like verbatim Drax from the MCU. He really yeah, is. Yeah. That kind of bothers me where I was like, I is feel he, like is, I know this character. He predates Drax though, probably. Because so often, right? I mean, I'm, I, I'm guessing none of us are DC experts, but there's so many characters that are like, Mar that are Marvel characters that are like, ah, this the DC character just feels like a rip off of rip off of that. And you're like, well, yeah, oh, the sure. DC actually did it first, you know? Because everyone's like, Dark Seed is just a rip off of Thanos. It's like Thanos is a rip off of Dark Seed, everybody, <laughs> right? Like, there's a lot of DC stuff like that. And I wonder if King Shark is another example of that, you know, of that archetype. Um, the, the the comparison that I think that is the weirdest to me, and one that I've been struggling with a lot, has been versus marvel's avengers mm. like you know both live service games both like multiple characters that have different traversal mechanisms and uh both were met with a lot of resistance in terms of like why did you structure this game this way instead of doing the thing that we like and i'm like all right what is better that like that's been the thing in my head because like i think i like suicide squad kill the justice league better than the multiplayer of Marvel's Avengers, which was the thing that like Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix were like, this is the thing that people stick around for and grind every single day to unlock a new costume. And then like nobody wanted to because it wasn't engaging yeah. and it was repetitive. I like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League's singular mode more than the multiplayer of Marvel's Avengers. But the single player campaign of Marvel's Avengers, I think blows Suicide Squad out of the water. Like, I, I think that the single player campaign where it's actually curated experiences and curated missions, and even though they didn't really stick the landing on like some of the gameplay and everything in Avengers, the 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 more directed, uh, more straightforward mission structure 
really plays in their favor. Whereas like Suicide Squad just feels so unfocused and open ended and like, yeah, go do this thing if you want. And then like you're going to just be existing in this same environment over and over again and going doing the same mission types. And I think it could have benefited. And I know that there are boss fights and everything that are like much more handcrafted than the kind of nebulous structure of most of the main missions and side missions. But I think that if the entire game was built in the way that the single player campaign of Marvel's Avengers was, I would enjoy Suicide Squad much more. And I was hopeful for that. I was hopeful that like, oh, well, since this is the only mode and they say you can play it in single player, maybe it'll be just like what I did like about Marvel's Avengers. But unfortunately, I haven't gotten to much in the way of that. And I mean, I have played one of the boss battles and it was kind of closer to that and one of the the lead up missions to that boss battle. Uh, But it just feels like there's too much fluff in between those really good moments. Mm -hmm. Uh, Marcus and I did actually, we talked about that last week, Brian, and uh, we're, we're, we're a little more stronger on the opinion than you here, but like at least Marcus and me were like, this is so much better than Marvel in every way. I, I did not like that Marvel's Avengers game at all not even the uh, single player stuff no i no i i fell off after like a few missions i was like this is not working well kyle well. you have to play for four hours before it gets good oh is that right <laughs> no no I I, and by the way i'm not i'm not trying to hours. discount your opinion you actually you played a lot more marvel's avengers than me but it's funny in contrast to to marcus and i's discussion last week because both he and i just happened to be like oh well yeah we have our our issues with suicide squad but we'll take this over Marvel, like, <laughs> like yeah, hand. Kyle, maybe like, no go, question. maybe go on the PlayStation Store, search up Marvel's Avengers, and you can buy it now, and then give it another <laughs> shot. But maybe it's just a lesson that, like, this isn't what anybody wants from superhero games, ladies and gentlemen. Like, we, you know, why superheroes are cool because they have cool powers and cool stories. Um, we don't really need to sort of repeat their missions over and over while online with, with friends. <laughs> like, that's not what we really want from the genre. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that both of these games, in particular Marvel's Avengers, struggled with is, like, it's literally Earth's Mightiest Heroes and, like, you're fighting a guy with a shield for, like, three minutes because you're just not, like, you're, you're Thor with Mjolnir and you're swinging your hammer and like a, a, a normal sh- soldier with a shield is like, ha, can't hit me. Yeah. And it's like, what, what are we doing here? Like, let, let's make these superheroes feel powerful again. And like, that's why Spider-Man is the superior game. And I mean, Arkham as well. Like those, yeah, those are yeah. those are the two best superhero game franchises of all time because they make you feel powerful. And then like the struggle happens when either you're like overwhelmed by superior numbers or you're fighting another super powered person. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, the, the movement of the suicide squad is, is because I really like interesting movement in games. It's like a, it's a big selling point for me. If it, if it's cool to move around, then that's just going to win me over. Um, just, just based on what I like, which is why I think, it immediately appealed to me more than uh, Marvel's is because it just felt like you were walking around in levels where here I'm like jumping off roofs and swinging around and like entering. What's that flash shit called <laughs> where you like enter speed the force? time force or whatever? Speed force. Speed force. Thank you. I knew what it was. I, of course, I know the speed force, uh, but entering the speed force as Captain Boomerang is is just a lot. It's just interesting and weird and, and fast, which is cool. I We've kind of alluded to it, but I will say if anyone's trying to get into this game i i do think like on the note of traversal just pick a character Mm -hmm. i feel like the game there's stuff where it's like this this character will get boosted xp if you do this mission right now but i found like so much more success of just like i'm just gonna pick this character and focus on them i think the idea probably if you're playing this multiplayer is that you have someone being each character and then the xp bonuses was balanced out because everyone gets like a different one each mission but if you're doing single player, uh, our, uh, Alex, who are you playing as? It sounds like all the three of us picked Harley Quinn that we liked. Yeah, I thought uh, around. King Shark and Captain Boomerang, I thought were the most interesting. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I started with Boomerang because I was like trying to be a hipster and I was like, this guy's different. Uh, he's no, I, I've never played a game where character moves like this. And I was like, this guy's hard to use. <laughs> I like his combos and how like he can teleport upwards and then you, yes. you continue to throw it. Like I, that guy feels very cool when you get it right yeah yeah he's also my favorite character in the game of just 
the the most confident and the most stupid. Like he <laughs> is, he's like I, we've talked about a number of times that he's like an early contender for biggest dork. You know, at, at the end of the year. Yeah. But like I just confident idiot is like a, a sitcom <laughs> character that I just love. You know, like you always <laughs> love. You know, he's basically Michael Scott except a super villain, which is like <laughs> wow, fantastic. Someone Photoshop that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, if it's okay, if we shift gears and rewind the clock, I've been playing Metal Gear Solid for the first time. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. I, knowing my taste, I tweeted this out like, this is the most egregious oversight in my backlog, knowing my tastes in games. And, uh, you know, that, that collection came out in what, like October, September, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wait, Alex, we did a new gameplay today on that, right? We did, yeah. Did I? Someone will have to go check the tape, but I bet I was like, you're not going to play this, right? I bet I was yeah. like adamant of you were like, that you were like, oh, I'm going to check this out. I've always wanted to play Metal Gear. And I was yeah. probably like, you're not going to play this. Don't, don't, don't make that promise. And here I am looking like a fool because yeah. you're playing Metal Gear Solid. I, ke- I kept my promise. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I, did you start from one? Yeah. 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 Oh, Sort nice. of Metal Gear Solid. Okay. Um, I, I really, really like it. I, I love it, I think. Um, wow. All right. Despite, like, all, it's those feelings mixed with, like, I'm trying to, like, really appreciate this game from what it would be like when it first came out. And, like, kind of putting myself in that mindset. And it's just, it's so impressive. I think the act of playing Metal Gear Solid in 2023, there are, like, some some headaches. Um, with, like, for instance, the 140.15 codec code for... Um, uh, the girl, the back of the box girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't um, have a physical box and yeah. they've included like an online version, like a, a digital version of the box. But like you, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Like it, this, this is my favorite example of that, right? I have the, the PlayStation mini yeah. right from a couple of years ago. And on the back of the box, they have screenshots from every game. That's like, look how cool these games are. Yeah. But for metal gear, they have to have the codec. They couldn't put oh, a cool yeah. Metal Gear Solid shot. They had to put the stupid... Like, if you're looking at this, if you've never played these games, you're like, oh, this looks cool. This... But then Metal Gear just looks like two green talking heads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, but I, yeah, I don't have Charles, the physical Brian, version. Charles, do you guys know what we're talking about? I've never played the original Metal Gear Solid, so no. Okay, okay. real quick. Yeah. The, you, there's, there's, you have to call somebody. It's a puzzle. You have to get in touch with a character, and the game pushes you to look at the back of the box, and one of and, the screenshots on the back of the box gives you the codec number to call the character that you need to call. But you are, you were right before that, you are given an in-game, like, disc by the same character. And, you know, the, the puzzle is, you're like, well, it's got to be this disc that I have in my inventory, like, this MO drive or whatever it's called how do I look at the back of it? Like I'm looking, I'm, I'm like pressing every button. I spent like 10 minutes doing it. I'm like, am, am I bugged out? Is there something wrong? So I Google it. I'm like, I, and it's like, you have to look at the back of the box, the back of the CD case, like the, the CD case, the game came in. And I was like, that would have been really cool in 1998. I don't have the <laughs> CD case cause it's a digital game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people pointed out, I tweeted about that. People pointed out like, well, there's a digital version of the CD case in the menus. And I'm like, Okay, I uh, yeah, how, how would I know that? that? So, yeah. uh, this is I mean I'm not gonna spoil anything, but how does the psychomantis thing work? Yeah, I know in... about the psychomantis thing. I think there's another way to to do that. Fight, like, I believe. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, very... that's a good question. The whole yeah, memory card I, thing. It probably won't do the memory card thing. Gosh, I I don't want to spoil it for you if you don't know yeah. how to beat. Psychomantis. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but it might. Uh, it would be. It'll be weird. I'm not sure how. That's you what I meant by it. yeah. How, how yeah. do you how do you actually do that encounter? Yeah. Um, Alex, can I ask? Do mm-hmm. you think I should play this game? Because I'm I'm weirdly interested as someone. I who think you should. Knowing you, stuff. there. I mean, there is a lot of things in this game that I'm like, oof. Like this line that Snake just said is crazy. <laughs> um, in 2024. Um, Offensive. I wouldn't say offensive. Just I like, mean, he hits on Mei Ling a lot, right? Does that get yeah? But that feels consensual. They're both kind of hitting okay. on each other, and okay, I, okay. and same okay. thing. Like everybody he hits on seems to hit on him back. It's they just like do, a very they do start it. they're like, oh, Snake, you're so handsome. Yeah, it's a very uh, horn dog game. I, I think, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
But there is at one point in time a character goes, I'll be a good girl for you, Snake. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? And yeah, he's, but in like, and the, he's in like the late he's like, 90s, we were like, whoa. Yeah, and Snake's like, be a good girl for me. And then like three yeah. lines of dialogue later, she's like, don't worry, Snake. I'm going to be a good girl. And I'm like, okay, uh, man. Co- what's going hard. on here? Uh, so yeah, Charles, uh, you should... You should. <laughs> I'm not... You keep I think the game rules, though. The game yeah. is, is awesome. Like, well, especially when you view it in that context of like, man, this is, you know almost you know what 25 years old something like that uh and the production value and just like the obviously this made by a ton of people but like it feels so singular in its vision and it's just like this pulp espionage experience and very clearly wants to be a movie in some ways um but a kojima game yeah yeah right <laughs> where it started but like some of, i love how it how it you know gives you hints at like i mean like the back of the cd case thing is like an exam an extreme example of that like it's telling you in plain sight like where to get the answer for this and you have to like one of the characters will tell you like if you're stuck just think simpler uh, and it's, it's like, oh yeah, they told me to back the CD case. Okay. Yeah. That's very simple. There's a lot of that kind of philosophy in this game and like the ways that you, uh, fight bosses or take down. So for context, I have beaten three bosses. I just beat, uh, cyborg ninja for the first time. Okay. So you've met Otacon then? Yeah. Yeah. I've met Otacon. He peed um, his pants. For yeah. You. He peed his pants on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he just went invisible and now like I saved my game after that Nice. the cyborg fight by the way I was so angry because when you beat him when you get his health bar down to zero he doesn't die and he starts like emitting electronic like damage and teleporting all over the place and the first time I beat him on a sliver of health and I was like standing over him and he shoots out his, his electro shock and I die and I'm like are you kidding me it felt like a dark uh. souls boss uh like when the monkey goes down in like Sekiro and he comes back uh that's what it felt like but there's like genuinely like this game's like very unsettling I'm not looking forward to Psycho Mantis because every time I see Psycho Mantis uh and it seems like maybe Psycho Mantis is working is like controlling uh the cyborg ninja guy maybe Gray Fox um or, I'm, I'm not, not making any facial expressions. You yeah. Don't look at me. I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the game, though. It's really cool. That, uh, that really warms my heart. Like, and I, I've I'm only, the only that. time I've had to look up a hint was like with that back of the box thing. Nice. I think no, the game is that you're like trying to play it as like, as not, not like, I'm always like encouraging of like, if there's like, you know, save states and stuff like that, like play the game however it makes it fun. That right? is not, one of I'm my beefs gonna... with the game. Oh, what? The saving? save system. Oh, <laughs> and the fact that like, if you like, if I was in a, I was in like the first hangar instead of this takes place in, I'm on shadow Moses, right? Yes. So the first hangar that you get to in shadow Moses, where like you find the suppressor, you find the thermal goggles, you find the cardboard box. I would save after getting those items and then I would run out and I would get caught on accident And then it would restart me at the start of that hangar when I hadn't collected any of the weapons, even though I'd saved because it loads. You have to exit the room and then it will save you like the state of the room. Um, But if you leave, if you die before you exit the room, then I reverse you at the start of that room. Um, And I think that's like a really... I mean, I'm playing the game on its own term. Yeah, very much so. you're You're not actually saving this exact moment yeah you're saving you're this like, room you're calling mei ling to be like hey let's remember my last checkpoint kind yeah of, exactly right? yeah 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 okay. uh instead of like when i start the game i'm going to be in this exact spot no i'm going to be in the mei last ling, checkpoint. right yes yeah, right? mei ling yeah yeah okay yeah um and i'm really enjoying the game i've been it plays great on steam deck i've heard that maybe mgs3 does not play great on steam in general but i'm playing okay. on steam deck and pc kind of switching between the two and it runs great um and That's I'm at great, the point, man. like when I beat this I'm, game, I'm yeah. at the point I'm going to buy a physical copy of it. Um, oh, just wow. like have on my shelf. Yeah. Cause I, I have a PS2 and stuff and PS1. I'm like, I want to own this game. Uh, like the real version. It is, it is a series like plural, like that I do revisit. I'm not a big revisitor of games, mm-hmm. but every couple of years, like I'll play the first 
two or three hours of Metal Gear Solid 2. Or, like, most recently, I think, like, two or three years ago, I, I like, pulled my PlayStation 3 out of, you know, the closet or whatever to play Metal Gear Solid 4 because that's, like, the one that I've replayed the least. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I and Charles and Alex, you can answer this better than I can now because I am biased and I played Metal Gear Solid in, like, 2002. So I was, like, pretty close to its, like, Metal Gear Solid 2 had not come out yet or was just about to. But, um, like... I, 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 the story, I think, like, stands up to time. Like, I think the story is still good and interesting and engaging. It is, yeah. Um, yeah. It, they, like, they recorded so much dialogue and optional conversation, and, like, the characterization is so good, and the voice acting is so good. I mean, there's I mean, no it's very pulp. People... Like, everyone yeah. is oh, a caricature. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's anime. Yeah. It's just, it yeah. is anime. Yeah. Um, um and, but there's a reason people were upset when David Hayter got recast because like he was so great at being solid snake. You know, that, I, yeah. I I miss him. <laughs> that rem that that reminds me every single time of like how hilarious that was, like behind the scenes of like because this was like around the time when they were starting to kind of like push Kojima out of Konami. And I remember they were like, well, we got Kiefer Sutherland to be the, the voice and likeness of Snake in Metal Gear Solid Five, well, And likeness, then like, clear, well, I guess, but, yeah, the, the voice. Yeah, and then they were the like, voice, yeah. the longer it went on and like the more like problems there were between Kojima and Konami, like it shifted very abruptly to, he's a mostly silent protagonist now. <laughs> it's like, we can't afford Kiefer Sutherland anymore. Well, <laughs> Yeah, that's there's a they have talked to them about that, and his response has always been like, No, that's that was always our plan, you know. Like, but well, yeah, who knows? <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. exactly. Yeah. We, we went out and we recast the, the much cheaper voice actor who's always been this character yeah. with a Hollywood, probably A slash B tier star, right. especially at that time. And now we're going to make him talk less. That that makes a lot like, of sense, especially amidst all this conflict between the creator and the uh, and the publisher. I I'm maybe 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 earmuffs Alex, um, but I'm not going to spoil anything major or anything about Metal Gear Solid Five. Let me. But, oh, I can't deafen because you won't appear in the dis in the video recording. Let me take my all, headphones All I'm going to say all I'm going to say is David Hayter could have been in Metal Gear Solid Five. And it would have been fine for a million different reasons. <laughs> oh, that doesn't tell me anything. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> if you know, you know. But if you don't know, then you don't know. And then you're, you're and you live your happy little life. Hmm. Okay. I think what um, I really like about this game is all the games are like reasonable runtimes. It's not like <laughs> yeah. it's not like I'm like getting into like the Persona series and I have to go through four hundred hour, five hundred hours of content to get caught up. It's like they're like ten to twenty hours each. Like that is great. I love Except that. Except for five, I think. Well, five, five, five. I'm, I'm. Five is long. Five is long. I think it's like forty to fifty hours. I yeah. actually played the first few hours of five back in 2015, but I had okay. no context for what was going on. But I like, I love like immersive sims and stealth games. I was like, I'm gonna play this game. Uh, I and I fell off because of uh, maybe The Witcher came out. I, I don't remember. Um, yeah. I don't know. I but was Charles, busy. Charles, you were asking earlier. I I think you it would be worth playing. I think you just put it on easy right like don't don't even i'm don't not playing i don't i don't i think i'm playing a normal i don't know yeah i don't know i because i, I i've died a I lot go, i've died a when lot. i go back to revisit like playstation one games i like to bump them down the difficulty just so i can make it through them without too much of it like we we replayed dino crisis a couple like last year me and marcus for super replay and i was like i'm playing this on easy we <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm not i'm not fighting t-rex i think i'm gonna start row, that when i know? get to two um because i do two, i might well Two is like two holds up well in the oh, sense of okay. like I don't think you'll hit too many pain points with okay. two. Where a play, where a PlayStation One game I think is a little harder to Dude, go. Dude, directing to, that like, missile through the smoke in that one area when you get the oh, nan the nano about, yeah. launcher. Yeah. And oh god, it feels awful. <laughs> like how I, you have it like speeds up at like bullet speed. And I I, I kinda I figured it out by the end, but I was like, this hasn't aged well. <laughs> um but like I a learned, cool a, a cool idea. I learned recently that there's a fight um, that you'll get to later, Alex, where it's important to know the left and right of the audio. Oh, okay. Um, where it's like you can hear if something's coming to the right that'll help you be successful. Oh, that kind of helped it, me with um, with the cyborg guy because he was invisible. Okay. But apparently, if you were, as I think I was when I played it in 2001, if you were playing on a mono TV, uh -huh. because stereo was still somewhat new at that point, 
like you'll call Colonel Campbell and he will like make fun of you for like not having a stereo TV and just being like, well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome he's like yeah you listen snake you know if like pay attention to where the the stuff is coming from and it, and if you just keep calling he'll be like do you not have a stereo tv you're playing this on mono Oof, well all right you know i hope you're i hope you can do it <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> which is like i love that kind of stuff which metal gear is full of that where it's like slightly breaking the fourth wall Two yeah. does it the best. I'm sorry, I'm getting so excited about Metal Gear now. Two is like the <laughs> best example across all of media, television, books, you know, movies. That's like we're gonna play within the medium that you're playing this video game on, and we're gonna mess with your sort of mind and like acknowledge what you're doing in this moment in in the field of video game. It's the best thing ever, man. Metal Gear Solid Two is a masterpiece. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. It would uh, be very funny to me if like if you were playing doing the psycho mantis uh sequence on uh steam and he starts digging into like your browser history <laughs> oh. what's this questionable link snake uh, oh so that's what you're into on, uh, <laughs> for twin snakes uh the gamecube remake of metal gear solid one he'll he'll look at your smash brothers save file and like eternal darkness was another one that he would comment on i think i remember what the other ones were that's oh mario awesome. sunshine i think he would call out if you had something for that that's super cool. Yeah, I, I'm really loving it. I My plan is to play one, two, three, four, five, and just go through them. Um, Sweet. Well, good luck finding four. Like, you have to get a PS3. I have yeah, one. I have one. To, okay. Because yeah. I, I, I'm probably going to wait until I'm, what I'm assuming is it's going to be on Master Collection Volume 2 if, when whenever that is. Because, like, I know that's been a big roadblock for Konami is that, like, that game was developed very specifically for the PS3. And as has emerged in the time since the PS3 came out, uh, porting games that were designed with that engine and that that architecture in mind have not been very easily ported to future generations. So mm. uh, I, hopefully they can crack that code and make it so that they're able to emulate it on, like, a of a unified platform like a master collection volume two yeah but uh yeah i'm, I'm i don't have a ps3 anymore so i'm just kind of out of luck if i want to play there's that a game. bunch of them at the office if you want to like <laughs> i i was i was looking for uh a, a game the other day for a upcoming video that we've got because i wanted to get some b-roll and i was like i it's got to be here somewhere and then i found like a ps3 and i was like Okay, and then it was like another ps3 and another ps3 i was like oh my god guys <laughs> um but, i don't know if ever seen a ps3 in person like thinking about it i mean surely i have but i've i have never played one i didn't know anyone that had a ps3 growing up i had an xbox they were expensive man they were expensive they too yeah. yeah like my friend was really into like his dad had a playstation one and so he had this big collection of ps1 games that he would play all the time and he went for ps1 they had a ps2 and then they got an xbox 360 as i know many people did but like I can't even picture it. I know it's real. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> yeah, saying I know it's, it's, like it's real. Thing. I remember uh, my getting my PS3. I had just graduated college and I bought a like a Black Friday deal at a Radio Shack, an Xbox 360 Elite, which was like the one with the bigger hard drive, and it came with like two games. And I already had an Xbox 360, but I wanted to like have it because it was like a really really good deal and like i i was part of a, a forum where you could like trade stuff with people mm. and i traded it to somebody for a launch model with the backward compatibility of a ps3 and i think oh, the two right. games that arrived oh god what were the it was it was a racing game and it was metal gear solid 4 those are the two games that they gave me and i remember i was so excited and i fired up I fired up the game and it was just like one of those, the backward compatible ones that were just like bricked. And I was just like, Oh, oh no. no. I... So thankfully I was able to like, the person was not like a, a jerk about it. They were like, okay, well I still want to keep this Xbox 360. So can I just like send you money to like, as like I, I bought it from you and then you ship back the broken one. And I'm like, yeah, that works. And then I took That's that money and bought a, a brand new PS3, but it wasn't backward compatible. Yeah, I, I I have I bought me and my friend split a PlayStation Three at launch because they were so expensive. I think they were six hundred dollars, yeah, five ninety nine, and um, with the intention of reselling it for a profit, um, and it didn't work. Uh, we couldn't find a, a buyer, so I just returned it. Um, 
Uh, but I do, I do still have the brick, right? That like it, it's not bricked, but it's like they're giant. It's huge. It's like as big as the PS5, um, a backwards compatible PS3, which was like the launch. Only like there was this window of about a year where if you bought a PS3, it was backwards compatible. Yeah. Uh, and like that's like one of those things I have like in a closet that I'll just like never get rid of because it's like. I I don't have anything else I can play like every PlayStation game, you know, one, two, and three. So that the thing, the the that it's a nice thing to have. I'm on eBay right now looking at like the limited edition uh, boxes <laughs> of Metal Gear Solid Four, just so I can have it ready at the oh. at the ready. I think uh, I might still have my copy actually. If I think about it, because that was one that I was I was such a Metal Gear fan. I was like, I got to get this version, and it's also, you know, through the years I will sell stuff and get rid of stuff and. But that is one that I think I, I always look at on the shelf. It's like, eh, that's not going anywhere. I, that's the only the only way to play that game is with the disc and the console at this point, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Um, yeah, is it, it it'll make sense if I just do one, two, three, four, five, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's how I played them. I mean, because okay. I know like, there's like Peace Walker, there's metal yeah. gear rising revengeance which is like a spinoff by yeah, platinum too much. okay if you if you're if you're pressed for time mm -hmm. right and you're like i kind of want to just see what's going on with solid snake and raiden right after you finish two you could skip to four if you wanted to but isn't um, five isn't that big boss which is three is that right okay here we go the timeline <laughs> is metal gear one metal gear top metal gear two on nes you can okay. skip those don't worry about those then it goes Metal Gear Solid 3. Then it goes Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. Then it goes Peace Walker. Then it goes 5. Then it goes Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, 1, 2, 4, 5. So, I mean, you might as well just wait for the remake instead of uh, doing 3, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, Is that supposed to be this year? Who knows? Know. Yeah. There was a, there was a, <laughs> it appeared in a trailer of games that were coming this year. Okay, but I wouldn't put a lot of stock in that. But yeah, mm -hmm. Brian's right. I mean, unless three is a disaster, um, you could buy. The, and if you play one and two now, and then you could play the three remake, maybe. And then also, you know, you were saying that it sounds like three doesn't work particularly well on Steam, so that might yeah. be the route to go. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. We're hmm. finding solutions. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are. And everybody has to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, no, I think people, I, no people one's like gonna complain Metal about Metal Gear talk. Metal Gear is the best. I love it. <laughs> it's it's like my favorite video game franchise. Maybe. Wow. Yeah, Zelda, Zelda, then Metal Gear. <laughs> I was probably. gonna say, did you write a book about Metal Gear? <laughs> I, I could. It. I'm available. You could. That's awesome. It'd just be me. Like you know how uh, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Is that what? It, is that what it, yeah. It'd be, it would be boy? that, but like. This game's really fun. This is the best game. This game's really fun. <laughs> you should play this. Just me repeating myself over and over. <laughs> I love it. Um, By the way, uh, going back to the codec thing. Yeah. I used to, as somebody who used to keep all the boxes for like his consoles and everything, like I had like my Xbox 360 and PS3 boxes and everything. Cause like if I moved or if I needed to take them somewhere, that was the best way to carry them. I eventually was like, there are way too many boxes uh, that only fit this very specific thing. I can just put them in a tub with some bubble wrap and it will work out just fine. I threw away, I cannot get rid of boxes of consoles fast enough. So I would be completely out of luck if I had that PlayStation Classic version. Well, oh yes. Yeah, the cla yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was going to say the Metal Gear Solid, it was in a jewel case. It, it, where So you probably would have kept that to store. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if yeah. I get like a physical game, I'm keeping the box for that. But like console boxes, they are Same. in the recycling yeah. bin as fast as I can get the console out of it. Yeah. Wow. I'm also looking at eBay. The U.S. got the worst box art possible of MGS4. As is usually the case when there I are know. different. Boxes. I mean, that's why Alex, when you and I visit Japan, yeah. we're always in those yeah. used game stores finding like our favorite games. It's like, oh wow, the Ocarina of Time box art is so much cooler in Japan. Yeah. It's just it's white, right, with the logo in red. Right, that's all it is. It doesn't. Oh, you're all Ocarina of Time. I'm like, no, it's no, no. It's just a picture of <laughs> of Snake's face close up. Old man oh, really? Snake. Zoomed I thought it was in. just a white box. Okay. Uh, there. I think that might be the bonus Blu-ray disc, uh, that comes with with some of them. I'm, Wait, I'm deep are, in the. Are you talking right about? Now. Are you talking about the collection? No, no, no. I'm talking about MGS4. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, yeah. so I thought you were talking about the original Metal Gear Solid One box. Uh, which I think okay. is just white with Metal Gear Solid tactical. Oh yeah, it's that's fine. That's fire. Yeah, 
That's fire. Um, that's why I want to buy it. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we've talked about Metal Gear long enough in the year 2024. No, mm-mm. Uh, I go. bet we'll probably talk about I, I, if I keep playing I and I plan to, I'll, I'll, I'll bring I'll it back play up. It if, if you know if it's for if it's for work, you know. Play it. Char- I would love to talk way. to you about it, Charles. You know, yeah. Let's do a I, let's do a spoiled Metal Gear Solid. One. <laughs> let's do it. I kind of I kind of hope I hate it just because I think it'd be funny. Just, no, <laughs> just, to, just in front of Kyle. Just yeah, to crush yeah. Dreams a little bit. I will I'm update sure. you when I have either finished the game or started MGS two. Um, I, I hope you stick with it. I, yeah, they're short enough, especially one. Yeah, it's only 11 hours. hours. Yeah, something, yeah like something like that. And the story is good. Like, it's going to keep you going, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. And uh, Brian, when are you going to start? I'm going to start Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when that comes in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shay, you've been playing Persona 3 Reload. I know we've talked about it uh, on the show already, but we haven't ha- had a chance to hear your thoughts. You're the person who reviewed the game for us. Yes, I uh, was playing it night and day for about two weeks. Got through it. Plus an and extra hour every day, right? Plus a 25th plus hour. Plus the dark hour. Yeah. The dark, dark hour, hour. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> by the end of uh, my playing that for several hours a day, every single day and into the night, uh, every hour felt like the dark hour. But no, I, I had a very good time with Persona 3 Reload. So I got my start with the Persona series uh, way back when the Vita launched and it had Persona 4 Golden and I was like, everybody was singing the praises of this game. Like, oh my God, it's so good. And I like turn-based RPGs. So I bought Persona 4 Golden and then I started it and I was just like, oh my God, like just get to the action already because like it, that opening is so slow and like I was, I felt like I was reading a novel because like there was so much like exposition in the beginning and like very little action. And I'm like hour two, I'm just like, I'm just like reading constantly and I have no idea if I'm going to like the gameplay. I'm not invested in this story anyway. So I bounced off it and I was like, well, maybe the persona series just isn't for me. Then persona five rolled around and uh, former game and former editor, Joe Juba reviewed it for us. And was like, it's amazing. You got to try it. So I'm like, all right, so I, I checked out the vault copy, uh, Game Informer. You know, we get, we used to have a a robust vault of games that we could go check out. We we still do. It's just a little bit more inaccessible at this point. And so I grabbed the vault copy of that and played it. And I was like, I'm obsessed with this game. And I I played it all the way to the end. I. I I feel like Kyle with Metal Gear Solid. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> so I remember I was like 80 hours in and I remember somebody else wanted to check out the vault copy and I was like, yeah, I'll just buy the game at this point. I'm, I'm enjoying it so much. I'll just buy a copy. And I gave the, the, I think it was like Matt Cotto wanted to play it. So I gave it to him and then I, I played it and beat it and I did so much stuff. I think my save file was like 114, 120 hours, something like that. So I, I did a lot of stuff in that game. And then, of course, Persona 5 Royal came out, and uh, I ended up being on the review for that. And I I think that was, like, mid-February 2020 that that came out. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, like, devote all my time to this game and just pour all my hours into this. Like, any free hours that I have, I'm going to play this well into the night, and I'll hang out with people after this game is out and my (laughs) review is done. And then like two days or three days before embargo, COVID shut everything down. So I was like social distancing before like everybody else was. Um, it was cool. I was I was a trendsetter, obviously. Um, I never Were you saw it coming. Zero? <laughs> I was not no, because I was I was social distancing <laughs> when everybody else was getting infected at that point. So um yeah, so like I I loved it. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It's probably my second favorite RPG of all time, Persona 5 Royal, uh, behind Final Fantasy X. And so I've and in the time since I have gone back, played Persona 4 Golden. Absolutely love it. Um, it's obviously played, like, a little finished bit, it. Like you yeah, finished all, it. Played oh, it all wow. the way through the end. Oh, cool. So I've now played Persona 5, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal. And I've also uh, reviewed Persona 5. Uh, Strikers, the the spin-off sequel thing that they put out that was like Muso meets turn-based uh mm. turn-based RPG stuff. Um so when when they announced that Persona 3 Portable was coming to to modern consoles, I was like, "Oh, well, I'm definitely going to check that out because like I love Persona 4 Golden. I'm excited that that's coming to modern platforms. I had to like buy a PlayStation TV in order to play Persona 4 Golden up on the TV cuz I didn't want to play it on my Vita at that point." So I ended up 
uh, buying Persona 4 Golden on Switch, so I just had it on a modern console, and Persona 3 Portable because I really wanted to play Persona 3 because everybody was like, oh, Persona 3 is the best one. You need to check that one out. And I just could not get into it because it was so outdated by like today's standards. And I was like, I'll just wait for like, there has to be a remake or like maybe they'll put Persona 3 Fess, which is like the upgraded mm -hmm. console version because the Persona 3 Portable was the PSP version. So there were a lot of technical concessions made for that. So it just felt really, really outdated and I couldn't get into it. And so I waited and waited and waited. And then they finally announced Persona 3 Reload and it, it was exactly what I wanted, which is Persona 5, but it's Persona 3, right? So it's like, all like the modern amenities. Persona 5, right? Uh, yeah. Controls, uh, all the mechanics are Social Persona Social links 5. have been updated. Social links okay. updated. So it, it really is like, you know, it's remaking this extremely important game in the Persona series, the game that established many of the conventions, but it's just, you know, it's an 18-year-old game. So it, it's an 18-year-old turn-based RPG. So it's very outdated by modern conventions, but they just took that structure and updated it to be in line with their most recent 2020 release. And it feels great in that regard. The only downside, and I will I say this as somebody who absolutely loved this game. I gave it an 8.75 out of 10, gave it a Game Informer must play badge. I think it is probably the second best entry in the Persona series. Like if, you, if somebody was like, I've never played Persona, which one should I play? I'll probably say Persona 5 Royal still, mm -hmm. but Persona 3 Reload is a close second the only reason it's not on par with that is it doesn't have the handcrafted dungeons that Persona 5 introduced to the series. And I understand it's a faithful remake of Persona 3, so it would be weird if they suddenly changed the structure. But like for people who play Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal, it's basically the, the, the main dungeons in Persona 3 Reload are essentially the equivalent of mementos in Persona 5, where it's like the procedurally generated floors and that's it like there's no like oh well this puzzle was obviously clearly designed with like this solution in mind and you're gonna have to do that in order to get to the next part of the dungeon it's not that there are sequences in the game that are handcrafted like in terms of like the the combat and dungeon crawling those are mostly relegated to like the boss adjacent areas mm -hmm. and okay. outside of that though you're just climbing seemingly endless tower floors of procedurally generated areas and that's kind of a bummer when you're like coming from Persona 5, but overall Persona 3 Reload still unbelievable. The cast is phenomenal. The story at first I was not into it, but the story picks up, especially in the third act and you're like, okay, I am obsessed with this. I need to figure out like what's going on. I need to see it through to the end. I legitimately miss some of the characters in Persona 3 Reload <laughs> because I love that cast so much. And like, you know, you're going on like hangouts with these characters and dates and like you're having a good time with them. So the social links being updated in the way that they are in Persona 5 uh, just feels so good. The combat is stellar. Uh, they, they introduced like the, the direct control, which was not in the original version of Persona 3. Like you can now directly control your characters. Um, your, your party members, mm -hmm. which, you know, before it was like they were all controlled by the, the computer and you just controlled your character. And thankfully they have fixed that and or, or updated it in this remake. Um, and, you know, they've adjusted little things here and there as well. So overall, very solid package. I recommend seeing it through to the end. I just wish that it had like the epilogue that was in Fess or the, the female protagonist option in um, P3P. But outside of that, like it's it's a pretty peerless uh, remake. Awesome. Oh, it's so weird that they didn't go out of their way to include those extras. I mean, they, I they haven't. Uh, I would have to bet there's going to be another remake of it or like another re-release of it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, reload, reload, reload plus reload. or something. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe uh, it's a DLC thing. Maybe a bit like because like they're being. I know that like being the female protagonist again. I have not played Persona Three Portable, but. Being the female protagonist, I think, does open different social links options and like I, I some of the cutscenes. It's surprisingly play. different. Yeah, like it's so more like than you think it would be. The same reason that I'm assuming that they gave for why there's not a Switch version of this game because there is absolutely no reason that this could not run on Switch. Is they were like, yeah, hey, we wanted to make sure we focused on getting it right. So I have a feeling, like, I mean, if I had to guess, I got no inside information. If I had to guess, it's probably going to be like some sort of like new package or like downloadable content that adds that other content like after the fact 
and also a switch version somewhere on the horizon but uh who knows like it's, it's just, we're just lucky enough that it, it's we got this remake and also it's multi-platform because this is the first simultaneous launch um in persona history i believe like i think they've all been launched exclusively on playstation consoles to this point um at least in the mainline entries so to have this go on xbox and pc at the same time is pretty substantial and i mean you know that was predated by eventual releases of p3p p4g and p5r which did come to to switch and xbox uh late 2022 early 2023 so it hopefully bodes well for the future like persona 6 maybe we'll get it launching on playstation xbox and nintendo simultaneously but who Mm -hmm. knows well thank you for diving into that shay um i think we've reached the end of the show surprisingly are you asking us i I know (laughs) i'm just you know we've had a lot (laughs) of long episodes we've had a lot of long ones recently so it's nice to mix it up um uh, but real quick, before we do get out of here, I do want to point everybody over to youtube.com slash Game Informer. Uh, if you're looking for our Apex Legends coverage, uh, we've got lots of NGTs going out, video reviews. It's a busy season for games, and we've got a lot of great videos over there. Uh, be sure to subscribe there if you haven't. Uh, head over to twitch.tv slash Game Informer, where we stream every Friday at 2 p.m. Central. And oftentimes throughout the week with other games as well. There's lots coming out. And, uh, you know, if you if you do miss the stream and you want to catch the archive, we upload those to our second YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Game Informer Shows. Just make sure you add the little at symbol before Game Informer Shows in the URL. Go listen to Brian Chase podcast, All Things Nintendo, every Friday. Uh, and, uh, you know, shout out to our podcast editor, Matt Storm aka DJ Stormageddon. They host a podcast called Fun and Games, which is like a general gaming podcast, as well as a more specific niche podcast called Reignite, which covers Bioware games. Um, So go and check those out. Listen to those. Um, And uh, until next week, next Thursday, have a good week, everyone. Hope you uh, are enjoying all the games out. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.